normally my videos are about what's going on around the property. Um, or I'll do a scenic drive video like I did, uh, you know, recently on my drive down to Valdez, or maybe I'll do a cooking video. But today, by special request, I'm just going to have a conversation with you. And this video is going to be a QA. and a I'm going to answer a bunch of questions that have come in recently in the comments. And I figure this is a good way to get back to everybody considering that I haven't had a chance to answer comments. So Kenai and I are going to walk around the property and talk to you about some of the things that you've had questions about. So one of the very first questions, and this is a question that I get a lot. This question actually came from Suzanne and Suzanne asks why I don't share what my first name is. She says she understands not sharing the last name, but she is curious as to why I don't share my first name. The reason for that is, is that my first name is very unique and it would be very easy to identify me based upon my name. So I do what I can to protect my identity. And with that being said, I hope that everyone can understand that and respect that. But I do welcome you to pick a name for me that you feel best or yeah, best suits me. And that has come about quite often actually. So some people choose to call me Annie after Annie Oakley, which I think is adorable. There is also people that call me Felicia or Lori because they think that's what I look like. Or there are people that call me Sister Ironside or Boo. Whatever you choose, I it doesn't really matter to me. I think it's actually kind of cute that people come up with their own names for me. But let's jump right into some of the other questions. I do want to say that if I'm unable to pronounce your channel name, or I think that I'm going to do it injustice, I'll just post it up on the screen. Um, but I will try to pronounce those that I can. I'm Sometimes I struggle with pronunciations when things are spelled a little off of normality. So the first one comes from Kuali2011. And the question is, is it a challenge to keep your garden watered or is there enough precipitation to cover that? There's actually not enough precipitation in this area of Alaska, at least this summer, to cover my garden. We've had more fire bans in this area due to how dry it's been this summer than we've actually had rain. I can count the number of rain days on one hand and they have been very sparse at that other than the day that I went down to Valdez. So the other question came from Linda and Linda asked, what is this big white tank in the garden area? This big white tank actually is a tank used to haul water. So as you can see by this indentation down here, it's meant to slide into a pickup truck. I don't have a pickup truck. And so this really isn't useful for me um, at the moment. And so I have asked my neighbors to help me because they have a way of hauling large amounts of water if they would help fill this and then I'll be using that to water my garden but in the meantime I'm just using my five gallon jerry cans that I fill up at the uh, local well and that's how I water my garden with and then there have been those of you that have asked how is the garden doing well let me turn the camera around and I'll show you exactly how the garden is faring well you can see behind me that everything is growing in lush and tall but the issue with it is is that now this is mustard, so I expect this to go to seed, but everything else is going to seed also. I don't know if you can see this right here, but this is actually a cabbage and it is uh, gone to seed as well. Bolted, if you will. Sorry, my brain went on a fritz there. I couldn't remember the word, but yes, the cabbages have bolted. The radishes have all bolted. This is daikon right here and it is bolted. The peas are just now starting to flower, which means that I should be getting some pea pods here soon, which will be nice. Uh, the potatoes are doing great. Carrots and squash are coming in nicely. And I have been able to harvest some things out of here. I have been harvesting the carrots as I've been thinning them out. And while they're really, really tiny, and same thing with the daikon radishes, I've just been throwing those in some stir fries that I've been making for meals here. I've also harvested some of the bok choy, which has been fabulous and also some of the green onions that I planted. So the garden is doing fair, I would say, but if you can also see this area right here in front of me, this area, I had pulled up all the trees that were sprouting in this area, all the saplings that were coming up in this area before I did this garden, and they've all come back, even though I tried to pull as many roots as possible. So 
I need to get a weed whacker uh, so that I can whack the tall grass around the property and I can trim these trees down easily. Um, yeah, this is kind of a pain. So that's how the garden's faring though. One of the other questions that came up is whether or not I would be contributing to the local uh, produce market. And the answer to that is absolutely not. I am a hobby gardener at best. Um, for one is things are so hectic and so busy here. Um, at least, you know, while I'm still under construction trying to get things done, I really don't have the time to manage a large garden. I just want to produce enough crops to feed myself um, for not only the summer months, but also to carry me through winter. And that's a squirrel. One other thing is, is that there is a large amount of wildlife here um, that could jeopardize my garden plans, which is one of the reasons why I cleared all this property back here so that I could put in a fence to protect myself uh, from dangerous wildlife. So that is also to keep the wildlife out of the garden, but I'm not gardening that entire area. That entire area is not going to be uh, taken up by crops. Most of that area is going to be taken up by open space and a place for Kenai and any future dogs to be able to run. So that's what the plan is there. <laughs> I also get questions about wildlife. And this one comes from Joyce. Joyce asks, have you seen owls or eagles on your property? I have not seen any owls here, though the previous owners told me that when they had chickens, that was the only thing that was a threat to their chickens was the owls. Um, but I did have eagles that were living, uh, that had a nest somewhere over here last summer. I would see them periodically. But where I live um, is not really conducive to eagles. Eagles are generally going to hang out by the river, like right at the river's edge or the shore's edge. You might see them inland, but you're going to see them more at the ocean and along the river banks than you are here because they're after the fish. And then uh, another question that Joyce had is, are there raccoons? There are no raccoons. They're not native to Alaska, so no, no raccoons here. Um, there's also no skunks in Alaska, no snakes, no lizards. Um, earthworms, believe it or not, are also a thing that's not native to Alaska. Uh, there are worms here, but they were brought in and they're only in uh, select areas of Alaska. But speaking of wildlife, um, I do capture quite a bit of wildlife periodically, I should say, on my trail cams. And this question came up um, from Debbie about what trail cams do I use? It's a Blaze video. So these trail cams, they do both still photos as well as video. Um, they can do video for like 12 seconds, maybe longer, um, but I just have it set for a 12, sec 12 second section. And then these are the SD cards that I found work best in there. I think these ones may have been the ones that came with the camera. Uh, let's see if I can get that in there while holding the camera itself. And yeah, they, they work out great. So I just use these um, around the property and um, come out and check them about once a week. And I've seen things like fox and moose and bears on that camera. I have yet to capture any other animals, but I know that there is other wildlife in the area. Um, I mentioned recently that I had a wolverine just outside of the property. I had a wolverine the first fall that I arrived here as well. And so... Uh, Wildlife is prevalent in Alaska. A lot of it is dangerous, such as the moose and the bears, which is the reason why I am always armed, such as right now. So I do arm myself not only to protect myself against dangerous four-legged predators, but also because I'm alone out here at my property, which is my way of protecting myself against potential dangerous two-legged predators as well. So... That is why I carry a firearm on me. And um, Fortress in Alaska, Dave asked, you know, if I get complaints about carrying the firearms or showing the firearms. For the most part, I would say no, because I think most people understand and appreciate the fact that I am protecting myself against potential dangers out here because people do worry about my safety being so far remote um, and removed from others. 
But also, I have had people that have not been pleased with the fact that I show firearms on my channel. And at times my channel has been suppressed for showing firearms. Um, and that annoys me because um, a, it's my constitutional right to be able to arm myself and to protect one's home. And also, you know, freedom of speech, um, not saying that firearms Carrying a firearm is a manner of speech, but I am saying that we should be allowed to discuss the firearms. We should be allowed to discuss all sorts of things having to do with homesteading and this way of life, whether you're in Alaska or you own a farm and what have you. So enough, I'll get off my soapbox, but yes, I have had some complaints, but not recently. On the same topic of guns, I got a question about my gun belt. And uh, the question is, is that a triple K gun belt? And how do you like it? Well, my gun belt is not Triple K if that's a brand. Um, mine was made by Rocky Top Holsters, and I absolutely love it. It is beautiful. It's well-crafted. It fits my gun perfectly. There's a link to the holsters in the description of my videos, so you can find it there. The next question that I came or that I have has to do with my location. As I mentioned, I'm remotely located, and... You know, I don't really have anybody close by to me. Um, you can hear. All you hear is the birds singing, the squirrels chirping, bees and flies fl buzzing around. It's really quiet where I live. <laughs> uh, but the question came, how far are you from cake? Uh, I am quite a distance from cake. In fact, I'll leave the exact measurement up here. Well, not the exact measurement. So a question came up also about why did I choose remote Alaska? So as I've mentioned before, I don't have neighbors. Um, it, most of the people who own property on the road that I live on are seasonal and they're you know, only here for a few weeks out of the summer, if even that. And um, even with that being said, there is not another piece of property that neighbors my property itself. So, um, part of the reason that I chose remote Alaska for, was for that exact reason. I really did not want to have neighbors. I didn't want to be around the hustle and bustle of the city. I didn't want to be hearing sirens and cars and running into people. No offense to those of you that I ran into in town. I appreciate that. but. On an average daily basis, I really just wanted to be in my own world. I really just wanted to be in the solitude and the peace and the quiet of Alaska. And that's what I'm getting to do by being here. So that's why I chose remote Alaska. And then the question came up about, will I stay in my cabin as I age? And absolutely. My plan is to live out my uh, days in this cabin and to pass in this cabin. I really have no intentions of going into hospice, um, a nursing home, going back to the lower 48, or moving closer to uh, facilities such as hospitals and doctors. Um, I'm a stubborn, stubborn person when it comes to that. I really don't like going to the doctor. I don't have any interest in uh, being put into a nursing home um, as I age, and so yeah, my plan is to stay right where I'm at. One of the other questions that I get quite frequently is, do I use that outhouse? And the answer is yes and no. So um, I do use the outhouse in days like this where there are hardly any mosquitoes around. Um, I will go out and use the outhouse. I don't mind using it whatsoever. In the wintertime, I'm definitely not going out to sit in the outhouse because it's just way too cold out here to do so. But I use the outhouse also to dump my composting toilet. And that was another question I get is, have you considered using a composting toilet? I do use a very low tech composting toilet. In fact, I'm going to put the image of what I use up here on the screen. And I will tell you that while this toilet was not cheap, I do love this toilet. Um, it is 
by far the best composting toilet. I'm not sponsored by them either, by the way, just letting you know. Um, but it was by far the best composting toilet that I have run across. And I say that for a couple of reasons. One is the urine collection. So it has a separate, which separates the urine from the fecal matter. And the urine collection chamber is rather large, so it doesn't have to be emptied every single day. Um, it has a self-sealing membrane that you can put up in the top and a plug so that any smell from your urine doesn't travel up. But because of the lid, you don't really have that issue either. And then it's got, you know, a waste chamber for your other uh, fecal matter. And number 25, Duro paper bag fits in there perfectly. And that way you do not have to worry about how easy is this to clean. You can literally just lift out that paper bag. I drop that into the outhouse and away I go. And super clean, super simple. Absolutely love this toilet. As weird as that sounds, I do use a composting toilet and I am a big fan of it. And then I got a question about why are you buying wood when you have wood there from all the trees that were cut down? So the wood that I buy is seasoned, two-year seasoned birch. Birch has the highest BTU rating for the woods that are available here in Alaska. Um, and I don't have birch here on my property. The only thing I have available to me is spruce or cottonwood, which is really a poplar tree. It's not truly a cottonwood here. Or I have aspens. And aspens stink no matter what you do with them. They're horrible wood to burn. Like I said, the spruce here, these were fairly green trees. They have not been seasoned. And I also needed a way to pay for the services that uh, were being provided here. So i had already purchased my firewood for the year and that money was already spent. I needed to have this work done too. And I was able to barter with my contractor, um, trade firewood for his help on getting things done around the property. So that's the reason why I bought wood as opposed to using the trees that I have here on my property. So the question also came up about what is my plans to do with this leveled out area in front of the cabin? Well, this area is just gonna be a parking and drive pad um, for a couple of reasons. One is I had mentioned in several videos that I do use oil. I'm gonna to point to the old oil tank, which is still standing right there over my shoulder. Um, I use oil to heat my cabin, to supplement the wood heat for my cabin. And when the oil tankers come in, uh, they have not been able to turn around and get out of here in the winter time, especially uh, because there's been this big garden area right here where the bulldozer is currently sitting. There has been a big garden area there, big trees that prevented them from turning around. And therefore they have refused to actually deliver oil to me other than once a year. And uh, the tank that I just showed you was 300 gallons. I just did put in a 500 gallon tank. So that'll get me a little further into the season. But should I need to get an oil delivery or some other large delivery here, I need a way for those trucks to be able to exit the property. So all of this is going to be leveled out and become just a big drive pad. This will also allow me to have a helicopter landing pad should there be an emergency. There are two helicopter uh, services that, um, I don't know that they actually will fly out to your location, but if ever needed, that is a possibility. And then uh, got a question about what is the name of the door braces that Marmy sent me? Uh, I will leave a link to those in the description of this video, uh, but they are just security door braces. They're basically a U-shaped brace that you put on either side of the door, and then you put a two by four in the braces that runs across the door, and it prevents the door from being uh, forced open easily. So that's what those are, but I will leave a link to them below for you so you can find them yourselves. And let's see here. Uh, Timothy asked um, about, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. what about having a lookout tower? A small shack that has three flight of stairs, about 24 feet at the third level, so you can watch for wild animals. 24 feet should give you about seven mile radius line of sight. Well, I will be putting a balcony on the back of the cabin, and that will give me line of sight well over the treetops. Um, I had kind of thought about a tower at one point, but also no. Um, 
because of the fact that I'll be doing the balcony and also because um, with the way the fence is going up, it's going to be a rather tall fence. It's going to be electrified. I felt it seemed a bit like a guard tower in a prison. So uh, to avoid that feeling, I'm not going to be putting up a tower, but I do think it's a great idea. One other question that I got was regarding what the um, employment opportunities are here in Alaska. And they're fantastic, especially if you have skills that can lend themselves to teaching, construction, or medical. Those jobs are always available here in Alaska. And depending upon the area in which you're moving to, uh, can be quite lucrative for you. Um, now, with that being said, you know, you might find that you're working in a remote village or you might find that you're working in extreme conditions. So keep that in mind. But there are other things like, you know, if you're a boiler tech, their boiler techs are highly needed up in Alaska and um, you can make a lot of money doing that. So that's, you know, something else to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, there's a good job market here for sure, depending upon your field of expertise and what you're looking for. Speaking of work, people have asked, what am I doing for work right now? Well, YouTube is what I'm doing for work right now. And I should be doing more than I am. And I know that. But at the same point, I am trying to refurbish an old cabin. <laughs> I am also trying to live my life. So for the last, I don't know, 20 some years, I have worked 60 hours a week or greater. And right now I'm, I'm kind of enjoying myself, but I am also doing YouTube full time. And yes, I do love it. And I love each and every one of you. I love these questions. And I plan on doing more of these QA, Q and A's, especially uh, before winter sets in and I go back to possibly doing live streams. But I wanna thank you for submitting your questions. I wanna thank you for your patience with me. And I wanna thank you for watching today's video. And for those of you that have subscribed, thank you for your subscriptions. And thank you for all my members as well. With that being said, I'm signing off for today. I'll see you again next week. Please take care and stay safe.